الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد ولا علی و صحبی وسلم اما بر حبت فلّہ فرم من حج بحل سن the اعتقاد of Ahl al-Sunnah, the creed of Ahl al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah is that Ahl al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah refrains and withholds their tongues from the leaders. And that means even the wicked leaders because the reason being the hikmah behind it. We'll give you the hikmah uh, in a paraphrase form, but if you want to go back to the Madhab of the Salaf, you can find many athar to substantiate what I'm saying. And that is a habit of Allah that <clears throat> Ahl Sunnah knows that the result of speaking about the wickedness of a particular leader or several leaders or whatever the case may be, that this was considered a type of khuruj, a type of khuruj, meaning a type of rebellion, meaning that rebellion uh, is of kisman. It's of two types. Uh, rebellion of the tongue, of course, meaning to speak out against, to encourage the people to rebel, to encourage the people to dislike, detest the leaders, even if the leaders are already detested. But to be a part of that, you don't want to be a part of that. The whole purpose of you practicing is that you are adhering to the iktiqad of Ahl Sunnah. You are adhering to the madhab of Ahl Sunnah. After that, it, it really doesn't matter what the other people are doing. The important thing, and by by Allah, I, in my experience, in being leaving kufr and coming to Islam, the most consistent da'wah is the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah. It, it's a madhab that is sahih, that it really, and it takes patience. Because you see many things. I come from a political science background, so then I'm going to give you a little aside here. And so for me, studying these kind of things, political systems, all this kind of stuff, and being concerned about leaders and leadership and, you know, uh, so on and so forth, is in my background. But when you look at the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnah, coming from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Obey Allah and obey His Messenger and those charged in authority over you. And this is, of course, referring to the Muslim authority or if it's a non-Muslim authority as, uh, and what they are uh, calling you to is obedience to Allah and something for the maslaha, the general benefit, and it doesn't contradict Islam, then you should obey. Yes, you should obey. Why? Because ultimately you're obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are obeying their commands for the sake of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they're telling you, if the leader, he's a non-Muslim and he tells you to pray, you can't say, no, I'm going to rebel against the leader. No, he, he's, he's this, he's that. I've, I've made khuruj on him. I've made takfir of him. La, you have to obey him in that. Prophet ﷺ said, hearing and obeying the Muslim ruler, and that which you love, and that which you hate, as long as he uh, doesn't command you to disobey Allah, and if he commands you to disobey Allah, uh, then there's no hearing and obeying, meaning in that command. Not, it doesn't nullify his, his uh, obedience and his quality of leadership, Allah in general or as a, a, a in, in totality this is one difference between the madhab of ahl sunnah and the madhab of the takfiris and the khawarij and those who resemble them so uh, a comment that i constantly see is a lot of people they say so what about this country and these people and the people are making protest and this and that are they khawarij no we don't say they're khawarij but what we do say is that they have some wafaqa, they have some agreeance with a point of the khawarij. So you don't just make a general hukum. We're not like you, the takfiris. We don't just make takfir of everybody because we realize that the ulama of Ahl Sunnah have, have looked at these masail, mas'ala takfir, mas'ala tabdi', mas'ala tafsiq, mas'ala uh, uh, of la'an, that when you make takfir of someone, when you make tabdi of someone, you know, declare them to be an innovator in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you declare that someone is a fasik, a, a wicked uh, sinner, or you curse someone, that all of these, they do fall under some general fiqh principles. And that is talking about the difference between uh, mutlaq wa ma'ayin. Uh, uh, for example, we say takfir al-mutlaq. 
وَتَكْفِيرُ الْمَعِينَ تَكْفِيرُ الْمُطْلَقِ means a general takfir. That anyone who does such and such is a disbeliever. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes takfir of the Jews and the Christians. So that means if you worship Jesus or you worship you know, anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen, then uh, you are a disbeliever. That is called takfir mutlaq. That is anyone who falls into that, you know, does this or falls into those categories of people that they are, it's a wasf, it's a general wasf. It's a, uh, a general categorization. That's called what? Takfir al-Mutlaq. Then we have Takfir al-Ma'ayyin. Takfir al-Ma'ayyin is when we talk about applying that to a specific individual. Okay? And so, uh, and so then you look at other things, other things in fiqh. This goes back to fiqh in the deen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Whenever Allah wants good for a person, he gives him fiqh and understand of the religion. So then we have to go, look how the fuqaha, how did they apply these principles? How did the people of the sunnah in the past up until now, what did they codify for us? What is the, the ahkam that we need to look at before we apply that to an individual? Is it just, oh, we saw this guy, he, he didn't rule by what Allah revealed, just believer. Oh, this guy, he did this? No, it's not like that. So therefore, there are conditions and there are the wabit. And we don't want to expand this conversation. It's already went way out of what I wanted to talk about. So I wanted to just mention one narration of Imam Babahari, rahimahullah ta'ala, a, a great Hanbali scholar who died 329 Hijri, so about uh, 1100 years ago or so. And he said, Woman qala, uh, Woman qala salat khalf kullu bir wa fajr wa jihad ma kulli khalifa wa lam yira khuruj ala sultan bi saif wa da'a lahum bi salah faqad kharaja min qawl al khawarij awlahu wa akhiruhu Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala he said whoever believes that praying behind every leader that is a uh, whether they're pious and righteous or whether they are a wicked sinful uh, tyrant. Whoever believes that it's uh, permissible to pray behind both of them and make jihad with every khalifa and does not believe in rebelling against the leader with the sword and he supplicates for them that they are rect to be rectified then he has left the, the methodology, if you will, of the Khawarij, the beginning of it, to the end of it. Because that's the asl of the Khawarij. This is why we have so, so many problems with those takfiri ideologues, is that they, from min awlaha ila akhraha, they have muafaqa with, with some elephants, <laughs> elements of the Khawarij. <clears throat> that they have some agreeance with some, uh, some of the principles of the, the Khawarij, these modern day takfiris. And they're a danger upon the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is why that we emphasize this, this minhaj. It's not because of irja, it's not because of that we're really Khawarij, it's not because of this and that. I know people, they have so many new arguments that the people before them never even had. So it's a bid'ah after bid'ah after bid'ah. Look how bid'ah, ahla bid'ah, in the past, how they dealt with ahla sunnah and called them all sorts and, 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 and claimed so many things about them. More contemporary mubtidiyah, they have their own madhab. And we ask Allah the Almighty to protect us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.